Hey, what's up, family? Man, listen, it is good to be back in front of you guys. I know it's been a minute, but listen, I wanted to share something with you that I've been uh, thinking about lately. Um, I think it was, maybe it was last week or week before last. Someone was asking me um, if if I felt like they were ready to get married. And as we started to, you know, go back and forth, I started to think about these things that, uh, or, or should I say a list that I came up with of things you need to address before you get married. Too many people get married and they're really not ready to be married. They think they are because they've fallen in love with someone or because they want to be in a relationship. I, I am surprised at how many people come to see me and when I ask them why they got married, they say, well, it was the next thing. It's, it's the next thing to do. Marriage is not one of those things you want to put on the, well, that's the next thing to do list. Okay. That's, that's not one. Uh, you can have it on your list, but that's not the reason to get married. That makes sense. So, uh, now, this is not an exhaustive list, meaning this isn't everything that you need to consider before you get married. But these are some major things that I wanted to uh, make sure that I point out. So just to get right to it. The first thing, uh, you are not ready to get married if you are not a person who is an open book in your intimate relationships. That's very important. Here's what I mean by that. So when I say um, open book in your intimate relationships, because uh, you don't necessarily have to be an open book in life, right? That, that, that varies with different people. But in your intimate relationships, if you're the kind of person that holds everything in, or if you're the kind of person that doesn't really share who you are with the people who actually care about you, that's a problem. Because you're going to take that right over into marriage and it's going to directly affect your ability, you and your spouse's ability to form a healthy unit. OK, so uh, you want to you, you, you want to address that. Right. From childhood, a lot of people show up to adulthood because in childhood they had to live in survival mode. Right. Survival mode will have will have you operating as an adult in all kind of ways. It's just not healthy for you. Being closed off or, or not sharing your world with someone is, is one of those things, because behind it is fear. Right. Fear is preventing you from expressing yourself fully into the world. And so you get into an intimate relationship. You know, you don't share your and, and by the time you're an adult, it really just becomes a habit. Like you're, you're probably not even trying to be closed off. But what I'm telling you is, if you know you have a habit of being super private in your intimate relationships, super private, um, only share what needs to be shared, need to know basis, you know, but but you're not really open to just sharing all of you. And be honest with yourself, you with yourself, you know, if that's you or not, you're not ready to commit your life to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to frustrate the other person. And watch this. You're going to frustrate you and you don't even know it. Why? Because we humans are designed for connection. One of the primary ways we connect is through conversation and language. But if you're not sharing, it's, gonna, it's going to limit your connection, which then is going to limit your effectiveness as a human being. You get that? So you want to make sure that you are uh, an open book in your intimate relationships. And I could go into detail about what open book means, because even with that, obviously, there are boundaries. I don't mean sharing any and everything with with everybody, even with your partner. Right. But I think you're wise enough to get the gist of what I'm saying. Right. OK. So the second thing. Now, this is a big one. <laughs> You're not ready to get married. <laughs> I'm smiling because this is a big one. You're not ready to get married if you cannot effectively communicate when you're angry. That last part, you probably was not expecting that, right? 
um, yes, you, 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 you may not, and the key word is may, you may not be ready to get married if you're not an effective communicator. And the reason I say what may, because uh, you can get married and really you can learn how to communicate in the marriage. That's one of those. I mean, ideally, you want to have that down pack before you get married. I, that's true. But it's one of those things where you can learn in the marriage and you can still get to thrive status. However, not being able to communicate effectively when you are angry, that's a red flag. Why? Because the way life is set up, the way life works, trouble is coming, coming. Bad days are coming. Tension is coming. You know, when you get married, you say for better, for worse, worse is coming, which means then you're going to be angry. Your partner is going to get on your reserve nerve. When that happens, you can't check out of loving them because you're angry. You can't because you're angry now say whatever you want to say to them to get them straight or to correct them or to let them know how they hurt you. You can't do that. Right. So if so, so, so. Here's how you measure yourself, whether or not you're ready to get married. If when you get angry, you cannot still be uh, respectful, that's a problem. And it, it, that's a problem for a lot of people. You want to work on that. Okay, You want to work on growing emotionally. You want to work on your emotional maturity so that when you're angry, you don't hurt people. Right? There's nothing wrong with being angry. Did you know that? Anger is a normal human emotion, and it is an indication that you feel you've been mistreated. Sometimes we are mistreated. Sometimes we just feel like we're mistreated, okay? But if you're angry, that's why the Bible says be angry but don't sin, because the two are not the same. It's not the anger that's wrong. It's what you do with it. So when you get angry... If you if if you have a vengeful mindset, meaning I got to pay you back now, let me help you, because you may be thinking, well, I don't be thinking that. But look at your behavior, though. When you get angry, do you shut down? When you get angry, do you go silent? When you get angry, do you can you communicate effectively to your partner what's going on with you and why it's going on? Or do you just yell and scream? OK, so if you shut down. That's an indication there's a problem. Why? Because, again, we humans are designed to express ourselves, even in anger. There's a healthy way to express your anger. If you cannot do that, you're not ready for marriage. You're going you're gonna to mess some stuff up because I can assure you they are going to upset you. And then some of the things that upset you, you brought with you. Sometimes they don't even do anything that's really anger worthy. But you get angry, and you, so you got to deal with your own stuff. But either way, if when you're angry, you cannot communicate effectively, meaning respectfully, treating them with respect, uh, and talking about it like an adult, you're not ready for marriage. Did you know that you cannot solve problems with emotions? Like anger is an emotion. You can't solve problems that way. You feel the emotions, but Emotions are not for the purpose of fixing problems or even making decisions, really. They're there to influence you. Really, I s emotions are signs. They point to something else that's going on. But we got to use logic in order to resolve problems. I'm not anti-emotions. You need your emotions. They're very important. As a matter of fact, in an intimate romantic relationship like marriage, you got to be emotionally connected. But you can't use your emotions to solve problems. Doesn't work. Got to use logic. And that's just because of the way the brain works. Like, I'm not going to go into all of that. But the way the brain works, think about if, 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 you, if you go back to school. You're sitting in class. High school, whatever. If a ravenous dog comes in. and But let's say he's on a leash. But the leash is real like a, like a string. And you don't believe that that leash is going to hold that dog and you're afraid of that dog. Now the teacher brings you a math problem, a math test. I promise you, you're going to get an F. You can know all the answers, but your brain won't work because your brain is in fight or flight mode. So it cannot work out problems because you're in an emotionally high state. 
you got to calm that down. So that's why that that's that's what happens when we're angry. That's why you can't solve problems with emotions or when you're angry, uh, when you allow the anger to take control. Now, working with me, this is wasn't an advertisement for me, but I'm gonna just give it to you. I have tools to help you to resolve issues, resolve problems without getting emotional, right? I have structured skills, communication and conflict resolution skills so that you do not get caught up in the emotions, okay? All right, so that's the second thing. Um, here's the next thing. This is the obvious one, but you're not ready to be married if you can't be trusted, all right? Now, the obvious trust is, you know, you and other men or women, you and the opposite sex, but also, can I trust you with my secrets, right? Do you have appropriate boundaries? Can I trust you really with my heart? Can I trust you with my finances? Can I trust you with my children? I saw, um, I think this was a while back, but I saw something, I think it was on social media, it said a relationship without trust is like a car without wheels. It's not going to go anywhere. Kind of corny, but it's true. Right. If you can't be trusted, you need to work on that. And here's how you know whether or not you can be trusted, because we we are man. Look, we humans are good. At fooling ourselves. <laughs> here's how you know whether or not you can be trusted. Do you trust you? Do you trust your own judgment? Do you trust you to make the right decision? If just at that level, you don't trust you, you're not ready to be married. You're going to mess up some stuff. Right. Here's another one. Uh, you're not ready to be married if you have toxic behavior. Again, that's another one where people say, oh, that's not me. I don't have toxic behavior. Take a survey and interview the folk that you've been in relationships with and see what they say. You may feel like, well, they don't even like me, but they, but, but that doesn't mean that everything they think about you is wrong. There are people who are toxic and don't know it. I hope you're not one of them. If you're toxic, obviously, you're not ready for man. What makes us toxic? Uh, again, that's a whole other list on its own. I can't go through an exhaustive list, but I'll give you a few things. Um, emotionally immature uh, can cause you to be toxic. If you yell when you are angry and you mix that with name calling, that's toxic. As a matter of fact, name calling, period, toxic. Don't do that. But I'm real big on yelling. I tell people all the time, we don't yell at humans. Whether they're one years old, five years old, or 99, we don't yell at humans. It's not effective communication, and it's disrespectful, right? Um, what's some other toxic behaviors? Lying is toxic. Because if we're trying to... If, if I'm trying, if I'm putting my life in your hands, we're becoming life partners. But I can't trust you. That's dangerous. That's toxic. I'm not doing that. So if you have toxic behavior, uh, you're not ready for marriage. Uh, this is probably another obvious one. If you're not secure in who you are as a person. Not ready for marriage. You're not ready for a serious relationship if you are not secure in who you are. Here's what I mean by that. A lot of people think that they are secure with themselves. They think they like them. They think they are good, especially if they're not on crack, especially if they're not on drugs, especially if they're not, you know, addicted to porn or whatever, right? They think that they're good with themselves. But when you mess up, how do you talk to you? Do you encourage you or do you beat you down? Right. Did you know tough love doesn't work? I kind of veered off a little bit, but uh, tough love. Matter of fact, it's an oxymoron. It doesn't go together. There's no such thing as tough, tough love. I wonder if black folk made that up or if it's just, a, you know, a different culture. I don't know. I know we use it a lot, but it's not it's not an effective way to, to parent. It's not an effective way to live. Definitely not an effective way to do relationships. What is tough love? Love is not tough in the sense of I'm doing this and I know it hurts you, but it's for your own good. I don't know if love operates that way. No, I'm sorry. I do know it doesn't love. Love don't love don't work that way. 
God has never treated me with tough love the way that humans talk about it, right? Does God have boundaries and say no? Yes. Does God teach me lessons? Yes. Does God discipline me? Yes. But that's just love. It's not tough love. Usually when somebody say tough love, they're talking about, well, I'm going to just let you suffer for a little while so that you, I just don't, I don't, that's not, mm. I don't need you teaching me a lesson, particularly if you're not my parent. When parents talk about tough love, they're usually talking about harming the child to teach them a lesson. No love comes across. Don't do that. How'd I get on that? Oh, because I was talking about being secure with yourself. Um, if you know who you are, then uh, you won't you won't try to offer tough love, but you will do the work yourself because I'm really talking about you healing. You will heal from the tough love or the strictness, let's name it another word, from which you were raised with. The point is this. Uh, if you don't know who you are, then who are you going to present to them to love? Who, who's in the relationship with your partner if you don't know who you are? Another way, another indication that, that you may be not so secure in who you are is that anytime somebody says something um, that you don't like, you spin out of control. Why do we do that? Because at a subconscious level, you believe you need their approval. I know you're shaking your head saying that you don't, but your behavior betrays you. you a lot of the work that I've done, I think I've shared this before. The, a lot of the work that I've done on my personal development, you know how I got it done? Uh, believing the behavior over the thought and the feeling that I had, because very few times I have actually thought, I have, oh, I got issues, or, or I need to resolve this, or that's a problem. But when I look at the behavior, and I say, if my self-esteem was where it's supposed to be, then why am I doing that? That is exactly what I said when I went to therapy. So when I went to therapy years ago, the therapist told me we've got to do, um, she said we have to do trauma work. And I was like, trauma? Well, what are you talking about? My childhood was normal. She said, yeah, we got to do trauma work, and uh, I, don't think you're, you're, I don't think that your self-esteem is at the appropriate level. I was like, oh, okay, I, if you say so, lady. I didn't believe her. But it wasn't long after that where something happened, and I was like, huh. I know I feel like I love me. I know I feel like and think that. I, I have appropriate self-esteem. But if that's true, how do I explain this behavior? How do I explain that over there? So I'm going to go with what I see versus what I feel. Sure enough, layers begin to pull back. I start to see the little boy inside pulling all the strings. I'm like, sir, what are you doing in there? We got to heal you so you can get up out of there. Some of you are successful by human standards, meaning you have a good job, you got a you know, nice house or whatever, and you think that you're thriving, but the child inside is in the sunken place. And you don't realize that until life takes you down a path where things are not going your way and he, show, he or she shows right up and starts pulling the strings and running your life. You think, well, I'm just upset because of what's going on. No, 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 no. You're upset because of what's going on, but your behavior and your reaction is a result of that inner child that's not healed. I know y'all don't probably want to hear that, but you probably have one that is unhealed. Anyway, those are the I had another one. Um, if I can't think of it, if you're not you're not ready to be married, if because I just thought of it as I was walking in here to the office. Uh, it wasn't in my notes. Uh, why didn't I write it down? I don't remember. But I'm going to do another video in the next few minutes. So it's going to be, you know, in, in the next few minutes. Uh, sometimes you got to stop thoughts from, they, they come in your head, you got to stop them from coming out of your mouth. This is pointless. Anyway, uh, next video I'm going to do is going to be, if you're already married, 
your marriage will suffer if, no, if you're already married, you will struggle at marriage if. I'm going to do that one next. Okay. Anyway, hope this was helpful. Uh, I know it's real short, but I just wanted to get back out here. Listen, uh, while I got you on here, let me tell you something. I'm going to do a live. I hadn't chosen, I haven't chosen a day. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to have grandkids Saturday. I think I'm going to do it Saturday. Here's what it's going to be called. Uh, I forgot that too. Basically, it's, it's something like meeting with the author or conversations with the author. And I'm going to talk about my book, my upcoming book. It is literally finally upcoming. I've submitted everything, uh, at least the first stage, to the publisher, the final transcript. Uh, I've submitted my about the author. I've submitted my summary. So they are in the editing process. They just emailed me today if I have any ideas on the book cover. So um, I think this Saturday we're going to do a live. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the book and answer some questions. Right. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will talk to you next time.